It is week four of the 2022 season here in the uh, JC Coach Mo Dynasty. As we follow the career of Jonathan Cropton right now with the offensive coordinator of the Akron. And this week we actually are playing a team where we might be competitive after weeks uh, two and three losses at Clemson at Michigan State that were not close. Uh, Charlotte is not quite as talented opponent. In fact, we stack up pretty well against them, but you never know how these things go. Uh, especially in coach mode where you're sort of letting your digital players run around with your paycheck in their mouths as we kind of look through the, um, uh, the information on the game. Uh, and, of course, our losses were to Clemson, at who is now number 7, at now number 14, Michigan State. Both losses, 17 and 18. Charlotte, meanwhile, lost at Air Force, 23 to 19, and then they had a close two-point loss at Big Ten opponent Purdue. So uh, they're also 0-2. Looking at their team leaders, their quarterback Foster looks like he's averaged about a buck sixty a game passing. Our uh, leading rusher Bird has 157 yards per uh, total, so about 78 and a half per game. And that's just a quick look at Charlotte. We'll give a little more in-depth look in a moment, but first let's go to the top stories around the country. As we see the Trojans upset, right? Is disgusted with USC's performance as USC falls 21 to 13. And they fall to number 13. We'll look at the top 25 in a moment. Uh, devastated Iowa State falls 38-10 to 10 to Iowa. In that uh, big in-state rivalry game there. Uh, Ducks have a tough conference opener with number 13 USC as the Trojans try to rebound from that loss. Uh, off on the right foot, LSU notches their first SEC win against Vanderbilt. And the Tigers hold off the Commodores. Vanderbilt looked like they were trying to storm back. Couple, got a couple fourth quarter touchdowns, but ultimately fell short. And LSU uh, starts off the year 3-0. and um, So a big good start for the Tigers. Uh, tough nut in the end. The magic of DKR Texas Memorial Stadium prevails as Texas 23-20 with a touchdown in the fourth quarter. Uh, Robinson, four-yard touchdown run to win the game for the Longhorns. Big win there for Texas as they beat Ohio State. Shaken and stirred, Buffalo suffer a collapse against Pac-12 adversary Stanford. It was Stanford 44-10 over Colorado. Big win there, obviously, for Stanford. A squeaker. The Mountaineers barely edge out FC East in their rematch. I guess they had played earlier already. Uh, Michigan and Notre Dame. Uh, This will be a big game this week. The Irish number 22, Michigan number 11. Michigan feeling a little disrespected. They made it to the college football playoff last year. And right now, they are ranked number 11. Quick look at the top 25. Number one this week is Alabama. Still top-ranked team in the country. They were off. Uh, this week, they'll play South Carolina. Then you got NC State, Utah, which, by the way, NC State is a rare 70-point. You don't see the uh, computer in a sim game score 70 very often, but NC State did it there against Northern Illinois, one of our Mac uh, fellow Mac opponents. Uh, then it was Utah winning at Central Florida, 33 to 14. Georgia doubles up South Carolina, 56 to 28. Florida beats Florida Atlantic, 38 to 17. Oklahoma over Nebraska, 44 to 24. Uh, Clemson uh, is number seven. Arizona State number eight. North Carolina with the winner of Fresno is number nine. Texas moves up to number ten after that upset over Ohio State. Not really an upset, but a uh, big win. Michigan's number 11. Uh, they beat Cincinnati 44 to 21. Cincinnati was another college football playoff team. Uh, Iowa State, of course, falls from number two to number 12 after their loss to Iowa. USC plummets from three to 13. Michigan State, after their win against us, moves up a couple spots. Arkansas uh, beat UAB, the number 15. Florida State, number 16. They beat Virginia Tech in a big ACC win there. Ohio State fell to 17. Iowa moves up to 18. Michigan or Cincinnati drops to 19. Oregon State at number 20 after a 35-14 non-conference win over Pitt. Washington, after their win over USC, is now number 21. Notre Dame is number 22. They beat Georgia Tech last week. Baylor uh, was off, but they are number 23. Oregon holds at 24 after a win over Penn State. Good win for them there. And Auburn beats Mississippi State to stay at number 25. That is a look at the coaches' poll. Quick look at the Heisman watch. Not much change here. Tank Bigsby still leads with Trayanum. Trayanum? Ooh, I butchered that, I'm sure. Uh, but he is second on the list. 
Uh, meanwhile, you got JT Daniels, the quarterback from Georgia. He's the only quarterback on the list right now. Davis Price from LSU moves up to fourth. And Blake Corum from Michigan is or rounds out the Heisman watch there. So what about our opponent this week? Who is Charlotte, the 49ers? Charlotte's coach is Will Healy. He's actually a Tennessee native from Chattanooga. He uh, went to college at the University of Richmond where he played for Dave Clawson and I think Mike London actually, maybe his senior year. Uh, then he went on to coach at, um, at Austin P. I think he might have been an assistant at Chattanooga first, became the head coach at Austin P. where he turned the program around and uh, that would lead him to him being hired at Charlotte in 2018. So that's where he has been. Uh, offensively, they will run a spread offense, but we are more concerned about their defense. They're running a 4-3, your base 4-3, which is hopefully will play into what we are trying to do on offense, uh, match up receivers and running backs against their linebackers. Um, so that uh, will hopefully work out for us. Uh, we'll see. They do uh, sub quite a bit. Uh, they are not overly aggressive on defense. So... Uh, again, these are, uh, you know, for us, that could work out, although their two best players are uh, defensive tackles. So they may not need to be aggressive on defense uh, in order to get pressure on DJ Irons, our quarterback. So we'll find out. Let's go ahead and uh, look now at the depth chart. Looking at their roster, you've got their starting quarterback, James Foster. He's a 75 overall. We'll just briefly go through their offense because we will not actually be seeing them on the field, but you got Shadrick Bird, the starting running back, is a 73. Fullback, not great at 49. Wide receiver, Cameron Dollar, 81. That, that's pretty good. They don't have a lot of speed at receiver, uh, but they've got decent enough talent there, I guess. Tight end is a 73. Left tackle, an 80. Left guard, 70. Center, 67. Right guard, 76. And right tackle is a 68. Defensive end, this is where uh, these are the players that are kind of relevant for us. As we see, Michael Kelly, the left end, is a 68. Right in, Posey is a 67. So hopefully that bears well for us, uh, not having to worry about too much off the edge. But their defensive tackles are going to be tough. Brian Wallace is an 82, and, and Des Morgan is 75. So they got a couple good defensive tackles. They're going to give us fits, I'm sure, right up the middle. Left outside linebacker is Derek Boykins, 76. Middle linebacker B.J. Turner is a 74. Right outside linebacker Prince Bima is a 78. Cornerbacks are not super fast, but our receivers are not that fast, so there won't be a whole lot there to worry about. Um, well, it won't be much of an advantage. So they've got an 80, 71, 70, 70. So mm, decent depth, I guess you could say, at corner. Free safety is a 67, so they won't have a, um, don't have a great player over the top there. Strong safety is a 70. Uh, so secondary... Uh, at least in, in the the back end, uh, is not going to be too formidable. Uh, kickers are 57, so that could help us. Obviously, that is not good at all. Their putter is a 74, so we might have a slight special teams advantage there. But that is a look at Charlotte. So we're about to head to the highlights. Uh, first, look at the team stats. Obviously, not much you can glean from this. Is the two teams have only played a pair of games each, and they both lost. Charlotte was a little more competitive in their games. However, we've played two of the top teams in the country. Uh, Clemson is top 10 right now. Michigan State, of course, a Big Ten opponent. They both ran us off the field pretty good, um, but we were able to move the ball fairly well on offense. Uh, 341 yards, well, that's not going to rank anywhere near the top in the uh, in college football. Uh, but 282 yards passing is pretty good. Uh, obviously, we struggled to run against those uh, big, massive defensive lines. Charlotte will be a bit of a challenge up the middle, but uh, they obviously are not going to have quite the skill from front to back on defense as Clemson and Michigan State. Um, meanwhile, you get Clemson or sorry, Charlotte offensively, they are extremely balanced, <laughs> at least in the traditional sense. 164 yards passing, 164 yards rushing, so we can kind of expect to have to deal with both. Uh, at least our defense will. We're not going to have to worry about that as we look at at their defense. Uh, they do rank 98th rushing. Uh, so hopefully that will bode well for us. Hopefully we'll actually be able to get the, some uh, some yards when we do run. Uh, and then uh, passing, they rank 73rd. Uh, we're going to throw the ball a lot probably, so hopefully that means we'll be able to rack up some yards uh, there against the 49er defense. Top players for us, obviously our top two players are defensive players in Arcelanian and Watts. 
And our top receiver, Matheson, is injured. He will not play today. Uh, he is out, I think, for three weeks. That's a big loss for us, but it just means that it's next man up. Somebody's going to have to come off the bench and make something happen there at that wide position. Top players away. Obviously, their top two players are defensive tackles. That is going to be a problem for us. Um, we like to run, and when we do, usually we run up the middle. Um, so that's uh, hopefully our, our line can get enough of a push and our running back can make enough plays to where we can um, do some damage on the ground today. And, of course, injuries they have none, and Matheson is out. So let's dive into the highlights. We are here at Infocision Stadium in Akron where Charlotte – is coming off a couple losses, traveling to Akron, who also is winless. Both teams 0-2. Both teams looking for some kind of success on the field today. As we look at the uh, defensive statistics, um, specific, we're looking at Charlotte. They average allowing 213 yards passing. Uh, that's not a lot, but probably the teams they've played don't pass as much as us, and they didn't need to. As you can see, they gave up. Uh, Charlotte gives up 194 yards on the ground. Um, we're obviously a passing team, but we, we're going to run it. Uh, we're, you know, we need our running game to complement the pass game. We need to get some big runs when we do. So uh, we'll find out today if we can have as much success as the teams that Charlotte has played. Meanwhile, DJ Irons, he's not going to have his top receiver, Matheson. Uh, how well is he going to do distributing the ball, uh, moving the ball around? He probably will have to take off scrambling as his, his guys might struggle to get open. Um, but here today, one of these teams is going to walk out of the stadium today with their first victory of the season. Hopefully for the Zips, it uh, will be Akron. So first and 10, Akron from their own 42. Irons to throw. Plenty of time. He's going long. Got a man. It's complete. And that is a touchdown to Kanata Mumfield. 58 yards. Simple go route, running the sail concept. He had one-on-one. -on -one. Irons decides to lay it up for him, and he come and Mumfield comes down with it. And Akron takes the early lead here in the first quarter. So that is the end of the first quarter. Akron on the play of Kanata Mumfield, and his catch of DJ Irons' is long pass leads Charlotte seven to nothing now, and they have the ball near midfield here in the second. Third down and five. Irons to throw. Across the middle, complete to the tight end. That is Ognenovich, 16 yards. First down for Akron into Charlotte territory. First and 10 now at the 40 yard line of Charlotte. And DJ Irons is going to take off. He's got a room. And he will pick up 15 yards on that carry. First and 10. Fourth and goal. Coach Arth wants to go for it. Handoff. And Norrell finds the end zone. Akron will double their lead. It's 13 to nothing pending the extra point. They ran it right into the teeth of the, of the Charlotte defense, right at their strength, and Norrells gets in. So an empty backfield here for Irons at his own 40. He will throw in some trouble, but he gets it away, and it's complete! That's Mumfield, but there is a flag. There is a flag. Are we bringing this back? This would be Mumfield's second big touchdown, and it's a personal foul roughing the passer. It will be declined. Akron will go up by three scores. They are absolutely running away with this one at this point. First and 10 at the Charlotte 40. Akron on the move again. Irons will run for this. He'll have a nice game, but then he fumbles. Charlotte will pick this up, and they might go the rest of the way. He is gone. Charlotte with a defensive touchdown to cut into this Akron lead. If the offense isn't getting it done, then the defense will have to step up, and in that moment, they did. So, Akron and the Zips offense trying to recover here. As Iron fumbled that last, on the last possession there. He starts off the next drive well with a slant across the middle of Tony Grimes Jr. for 17 yards. Trying to push that lead back up to three scores. 
First and 10 from the Charlotte 39. Irons' pass is complete. This is Grimes again. He breaks a tackle and will get 22 yards on that reception. It's like it was just a dig route. Lost his man, Irons. Good throw, nice catch, and a big play for the Akron offense. So after a Charlotte turnover to start the second half, Akron now with the ball at the 16, a chance to push their lead. Again, it's 24 to seven right now. Hand off to Anthony Williams. He'll pick up three yards, second down and seven coming up. Second set from the 12. They need the five, Irons. Sits in the pocket, pass complete across the middle. That's George Quarles Jr. And that is a 12 yard touchdown pass. And Charlotte is slow. Well, they are seeing their hopes of winning fade here as Akron now up 30 to seven. Charlotte has not been able to do anything on offense. Charlotte's only touchdown came on defense. And now they find themselves trailing by 23. Charlotte again, unable to find the end zone, get any points. And they punt it away. And first play of this drive, and John Zell Norris rumbles forward for 17 yards. That pushes Akron up over the century mark in the running game. As they are now starting to establish their dominance here today. So third and seven, they need the 28. Irons to throw, he's in some little trouble, gets it away, complete. Oh, and Grimes makes a defender miss and goes the rest of the way to the end zone here. We'll see the catch. And it's just a little hesitate move. Actually just kind of breaks the tackle. But takes it to the end zone and Akron now up 37 to seven. Second down and eight from the 23. Irons, play action. Moves to his right, throws it long and it's complete. That is Qualls Jr. again, 39 yards for another Akron first down. Akron's offense putting up some huge numbers today. And that'll be the end of the third quarter. Akron is dominating. They lead it 38 to 10. Charlotte has only three offensive points today. And Akron... Right now, their offense is a bit of a juggernaut. Charlotte cannot stop them. Second and goal from about the three. Irons, quick screen to the right. That will be a touchdown for Tony Grimes. Akron now goes up 44 to 10, pending the extra point. Came out in their little Emory Henry formation. He had a tight end and a tackle in front of him. He makes the easy catch, strolls into the end zone, and Akron now with a commanding lead. And so Akron comes out in the victory formation. They will take a knee, and that will end this game. Big win for Akron. Great showing by the Akron offense. Just an unbelievable performance here by Crompton's Akron Zip offense as they roll running up 48 points. Look at DJ Irons, 394 total yards, five touchdowns. He did have the one fumble, but, you know, when you score 48, uh, it's kind of hard to be too critical. As there you see his numbers, 22-28. 351 yards, five touchdowns, and this, uh, this was, yeah, this was the kind of the perfect performance. Uh, <laughs> definitely the best performance that the Akron offense has put on since Crompton uh, took over the offensive coordinator role. Now, let, you know, you have to be careful because Charlotte is one of the worst teams in the country, especially on defense. But uh, you know what? That the Akron still did what they had to do, and they come away with a big win, 48 to 10. Now they're gonna see if they can take that momentum and go down to Knoxville, take on Tennessee, and, you know, maybe pull off a, a shocking win similar to the one they had at Auburn last year uh, before they move into conference play where they hope to compete for and win the Mid-American Conference Championship. So quick look at the stats here. Obviously the score was one-sided. First downs, 20 to seven. Uh, total offense, 548 yards. That is that is uh, easily the most that we've had uh, since we started here with Akron. Uh, almost 200 yards rushing, which is obviously rare for the Akron offense, but 351 yards through the air. Uh, we only threw, look at that, we had 10 more rushes than passes. I don't know that that's ever happened to have more carries than, than passes, but it did today, and DJ Irons, um, with only 28 passes at 351 yards, uh, third down conversions was a big story. Charlotte was 2 of 11, we were 5 of 11. Also had a couple fourth down conversions. 
Um, so, yeah, big performance there. Uh, turnovers, each team had one. Each team lost a fumble. Uh, penalties, we only had a couple, which is, you know, it's good. Only that one holding penalty after the last couple of weeks just getting mauled. Well, last week especially. I think we had, what, 10 uh, holding penalties. It was a disaster. Um, but that was a look at the team stats. So we move to the player statistics. Obviously, DJ Irons, the big story, 22 of 28, 351 yards, five touchdowns. Uh, he only had one sack, only gave up one sack. But we knew that we were going to, um, that uh, Charlotte defensive line was not going to be near as menacing as the ones that we've played so far. Uh, Williams actually led the, uh, in total carries, but Norrells had more yards, 80 yards on 14 carries, and he also had a touchdown uh, receiving. Uh, yeah, Mumfield, 152 yards on five catches. Big day for him. He had two touchdowns. Grimes had two touchdowns. Qualls caught a touchdown, three catches for 58 yards. All three of these guys stepped up in the absence of Matheson. Uh, we gave our tight ends a lot more uh, appearances today, and Ogninovich caught three balls for 27 yards. Norrells caught three passes out of the backfield for 14, and then Williams had one for three. So that's a look at our um, our statistics. So big win, uh, but again, it was only Charlotte, so we're not going to get carried away, um, and we're going to hopefully get ready to put on a good show next week against Tennessee. So this is Wall Force One signing off, and we'll see you guys next time.